everybody protected each other. Everybody got out the situation clean, um, healthy. So that's what that's what's matter. And um, ready for week one. I ain't here to my, to my kids. My kids ain't see it neither. I hope they didn't. So. contrition from Aaron Donald about the moment that he blew a gasket in joint practices with the Cincinnati Bengals and started swinging helmets. And look, it is a sad situation. It, I, I don't want to climb up too high on my soapbox here, but if this wasn't Aaron Donald, I think a lot more people would be calling it like it is. I think a lot of people are tiptoeing around Aaron Donald. A lot of people in media are concerned about their access. They want to keep the Rams happy. Stuff like that just pisses me off. It gets in the way of right and wrong truth and falsity and the truth here is Aaron Donald and I know the game's going to be on NBC and the game's less appealing and attractive if Aaron Donald isn't playing he should not be playing for what he did he should have been suspended for what he did the Rams weren't going to do it and just because I accept that doesn't mean I condone it I just know the Rams are never going to sit down Aaron Donald if the decision is left up to them they weren't going to do it. He was disciplined. What was the discipline? We're not going to tell you. Yeah, it was a it was a talking to. It was a please don't do this again. They were never going to suspend him. And that's important, Shireen, because we've seen what the NFL will do when it has the power over this kind of behavior. Miles Garrett was suspended six games yep. for hitting Mason Rudolph over the head with his helmet during a game in November 2019. And the reason the NFL didn't do anything about this is they can't by rule. Isn't it odd? The personal conduct policy applies everywhere in the world except on a practice field. And even when you're practicing with players from another team, the league can't do anything about it. And I say all this because Mark Maskey of the Washington Post reports that the league absolutely will look into expanding its jurisdiction to cover behavior during joint practices and treat that conduct the same way conduct during a game would have been treated. And if that's the case, if you do what Aaron Donald did, you are getting suspended, Shireen, and that's what the outcome needs to be. And I figured that would be the case, Mike, that they would address this or try to address this after the season, the competition committee, and I think they will try to do that depending on what happens with their talks with the NFLPA. But, you know, this was uncalled for, and we see this more and more. We saw it with the Rams and the Cowboys a few years ago. I was there for that, and, and it went over to the sidelines, almost into the stands, and – People are leaning over and participating out of the stands. So it, some of these joint practices can get very dangerous. And I've seen it firsthand, and we saw that. And that should not have happened. Uh, and he should be suspended, at least for one game. But I do. I will be curious, like, how – because we actually had video of this. And if we just had – again, it's like the Ray Rice situation. When you just have the words, it's one thing. When you actually see the video and see what happens, it's something totally different. So are they going to have, like, a monitor at every joint practice, which I think they should? They should send a monitor out there to monitor these practice – practices are they going to get the the film from the teams after the practice to see how it goes or are they just going to rely on on fans video so they're going to have to take that in consideration because this is not a televised event obviously uh, but there will be video from the teams and I assume that they will be able to watch that but they probably should have a monitor there as well watching these joint practices which teams are doing more and more now The the starters play in those joint practices they don't play in the preseason games anymore yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. And I think that, that you know, to the extent that for now we rely upon the, the citizen journalist who happens to have the cell phone device out, and I think in this case the person saw something was coming, so pulled the phone out to capture whatever came next and just got lucky, you need to have a monitor there when two teams – I mean, it's common sense. You got two teams yeah. going against each other. You, you are hoping that things don't boil over. And if you don't have the same consequences available for misconduct, then it's going to happen. I don't think Aaron Donald does what he did if he knows there's a chance he gets suspended for it. The fact that he there is that. no deterrence, that there is no punishment, allows the player to engage in the behavior. So we wouldn't even be having the conversation about Aaron Donald swinging helmets if he knew the end result was he could have been suspended. The fact that he knew he wouldn't be suspended is what caused him to do it, which is why this needs to change. There is an interesting wrinkle, though, Shereem, and I've already heard from some folks about this. The union isn't just going to sign off on it. The union doesn't like 
the current fine system and suspension system for on-field misconduct. This is going to be a subject for collective bargaining. It's going to be mandatory. It's a change in the work conditions. The NFL just swooping in saying we're taking jurisdiction over joint practices. The union has to agree to it. I think the union should agree to it because, Shireen, every time a union member swings a helmet and hits another player, that's a union member too. And between the two, I think you should be protecting the person who's getting whacked over the head with a helmet. So hopefully the NFLPA will see that this shouldn't be treated as some sort of a collective bargaining game, which is exactly what the NFL would do if the shoe was on the other foot. I hope the union rises above that and says, you know what? This is in the best interest of everyone to ensure that there is a real deterrence for this kind of behavior. And there should be, Mike. It shouldn't matter. As Aaron Donald said, well, it was practice, wasn't it? That shouldn't matter. You should never be able to swing a helmet at another player. And this should be an easy one. And this should be one that the NFL PA signs off on without a lot of negotiation. It's a safety issue. And if, if somebody gets their career lost by being hit over the head with the helmet, you know, it could happen. And you don't want to see that. Nobody wants to see that. And and they need to do something to rein these joint practices in because that's what it becomes because the players know there are no consequences. And as you pointed out, Mike, a couple of weeks ago, some coaches even like it. They smile about it. They talk about it in the meetings. Did you see the passion from Aaron Donald? Wow, we love that. Go get it. You know, he's got the team fired up, ready to go. So coaches, I, I don't want to say condone some of these joint practice fights, but they don't necessarily dislike them either. Hey, Aaron Donald was a guy who had one foot into retirement in the offseason. So if you're Sean McVay, as long as nobody got hurt by the helmet that he swung and, and went flat when it hit another helmet, there's that that yeah. horrifying still frame of a of a helmet – pancaked because of the force of Aaron Donald. I, it, it, it just needs to be done. And, you know, under the idea that it's just practice, I, I guess you could rip someone's helmet off and stomp on his forehead with a cleat like Albert Hainsworth once did to Cowboys yeah. center Andre Garrod. I mean, this idea that it's practice so it's okay, that needs to be rejected and repudiated by the NFL and by the NFL PA. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.